Today we're exploring the Daksin Kali Temple in the Farfing area, the southeastern part of the Kathmandu Valley. The Farfing area has a lot to offer and is probably one of the most neglected areas in the Kathmandu Valley for tourism. If you'll pardon the interruption, I have another tip for you that I'd like you to try. And if you do, we'll both get $5. What Privacy.com is, is a money transfer service that doesn't take any charges from us, the consumer. It creates single-use credit cards to make international payments for your trek in Nepal. For example, donations to nonprofit agencies in countries that really need help like Nepal and any other online shopping that you want to do. I use it myself and I like it for yearly subscriptions that automatically renew. I hope you give it a try from our link in the description. And now on with the show. Although we're exploring the Daksin Kali Hindu temple, this area is one of the largest Buddhist centers in the Kathmandu Valley. I'm looking forward to exploring more of this area. The Daksin Kali Temple is unique in that it's an outside temple. It is famous for being a place of animal sacrifice. If you go to the temple either on Tuesday or Saturday mornings, you will see a river of blood with so many animals being slain. When we got there, the priest was cleaning the temple floor. This was no doubt because we had just missed a ceremonial sacrifice. Many Westerners think it's cruel to kill the animals for a god. What they often overlook is that the god only consumes the blood, which could be detrimental for people to ingest. Many diseases can be transmitted via the blood, so it's good to pour it out. The priest takes up to half of it and shares with the poor. You'll never see meat being wasted in Nepal. Also, if you're from the U.S. and eat meat, you're also doing the same thing, but you're forgetting to thank your God for the food. There's another temple just after the Daksin Kali Temple. Just continue up the path from here. 
This temple is dedicated to Kali's mother, which is a story for another time. Another pro-Nepali or pro-Hindu cultural way of thinking about it is that the animals that are slain here saw sunshine every day of his life and was loved by his owner. The way they raise cattle, pigs, and chickens in the U.S. is truly inhumane. Even if you're a meat eater, you'll probably agree. Just as Bhairav is an angry incarnation of Lord Shiva, Kali is an incarnation of Parvati, Shiva's wife, and is often considered the goddess of death and time. Just like so many things in Hinduism, she is also a loving mother, so balanced. Devotees come here to pray to this loving mother figure for a more positive life and protection. After all, there is no anger like a mother's loving, righteous indignation. The main way devotees gain favor is to bring cocks and uncastrated male goats, but a duck egg will also work. The temple grounds are very quiet and peaceful. If you enjoy caving, Buddhism, and exploring different culture, there are enough things to see and do to last two to three days in this area. It's a lot of walking and climbing, so if you're up to it, you're in for a real treat. You can also take a taxi and use the driver as a bit of a guide. Most taxi drivers are pretty knowledgeable about things to see.
There are several monasteries in the Farfing area, as well as Hindu temples. One of my favorite temples or idols is the Ganesh idol on the side of the road that seems to be a natural idol that just needed a splash of orange paint to make Ganesh just pop out. I missed it this time, but be sure to look to your right just before you reach Farfing.